Hey everybody, welcome to Shine's Trading Room. Uh, today we have a special guest, uh, Mr. Jim Riggio. Um, I call him Jim the Options Riggio, as he is a master in the options market. Okay, that's equity options, probably multiple options too. Uh, today I just wanted to talk to Jim and get a little background about him and why uh, we are huge fans and love some of the strategies that uh, Jim works on. So today we're just gonna get a little background about uh, you know Jim's history and past and, and what makes him such a master in in the options market. So Jim, give us a little background about yourself, a uh, little history, a little experience, and, and take it from there. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I worked for um, IBM for about a decade and Price Waterhouse for a decade. I did a lot of, I was a financial services partner and I did a lot of trading, okay, on, on my own time. And when I ended up leaving, uh, I ended up looking to see, because um, I made a lot of money during the dot-com boom. And what I ended up looking around for is, uh, you know, after making just having two, three, four great years, I gave a lot of it back. And I looked around, who did a great job of risk management? And at the time, some of the best guys were UBS guys, former O'Connor guys. I don't know if a lot of you viewers know, O'Connor used to hold more seats on the SIBO than anybody else. And I looked around and, I, and what I ended up doing is I found that what they were doing, they had a playbook. And it was basically using options to manage their risk. And uh, you know that was how I started about 12 years ago. Okay, um, and and you started trading. Uh, it was your own account, your own uh, small amount, and then you grew from there. And 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 what ended up happening was you know friends, family started saying, Jim, could you end up doing this for me? Can you end up managing that? And it ended up going into a fund, and that was the very start of my hedge fund. Uh, interesting. Let, so let's uh, get right to uh, some of the. Uh, I guess insights into into options. Uh, you use options as a hedge. Uh, you also use options to enter positions uh, to bet either right. long or short. Um, what would you say would be uh, some of your uh, favorite positions or let's go back into the past maybe what was your best position ever or and or maybe your worst position ever if you want to talk about some of those. It's very, very interesting because the thing is that when I take a look at options just like you asked there's basically two ways to approach it. One of them is to end up using options as an overlay strategy on some of your equities and the other ones are to be able to establish positions with your um, with options by themselves without equities. It really depends on what you're trying to end up accomplishing. I often end up calling options are almost like a rope, right? Very useful tool. You can get all kinds of leverage out of them. You're not careful, you can hang yourself. So what are you trying to end up accomplishing? It really starts with, so if you're trying to end up accomplishing maximum return for the amount of risk you're taking, you can end up establishing very good positions that way. The challenge is that it's almost like having to pay rent for them. Every single day, a little piece gets taken out of your hide because you're paying rent for that leverage. You can also end up, if you want to consider selling the insurance. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of people that end up selling the insurance naked, and they make great money for two, three years sometimes, and then when they lose, they get taken out on a stretcher. Right. So, you know, where do you want to end up playing is, is for me, somewhere in between. Right. I understand. Uh just uh, going back to uh, one, if you can name one specific trade on uh, just something that comes to mind, anything. I, I mean, I myself, I've traded you know millions, uh, actually probably at this point, hundreds of millions of shares of stock, maybe billions of shares over the past uh, right. 15 years myself. And at times people come to me and, and say, okay, where's your black box? But it's not a black, black right, box, right, it's right. actually just my fingers tearing up the keyboard. And, and I have standout trades that I remember I some of the financial names for me, uh, 2008 swinging 50 or 100,000 share uh, positions at a time and really capitalizing and killing it day after day, week after week. What's, what trade stands out in your mind? A couple of them, like for example, I'll give you one that had limited risk but a lot of upside potential. Um, it did something called a back ratio, okay, what I ended on Google. Uh, one of the things that you'll end up finding in, in these options positions is that people are always willing to pay a lot more for insurance, a lot more for a put or a call as you get closer to expiration, right? Because they know when expiration comes, the thing's going to move a lot. Which way? I don't know, but a lot. So what you end up doing is that I'll end up, I don't like to actually trade the earnings themselves because I don't have any edge, right? I don't know if they're going to beat earnings or not, but what I do know is that that volatility is going to go up into earnings. So a few years back, Google used to move a lot in like the month before earnings because it would kind of get out, oh, they're going to beat their number or they're going to miss their number and it would start to run. So what would end up doing is it, I'd sell, okay, one call basically at the money. And then I'd buy two calls, maybe 20 points above it. 
So for you folks that know a little bit about options, what ends up happening is that you have a P&L that kind of looks, it goes straight, it drops a lot because when you start to go above the money at expiration, it'll start to end up losing a lot of money. But if you get way above it, it starts to run up. Sometimes, okay, we call that the valley of death. If you're near those short options, you can get killed. Uh, but what ends up happening, and the reason why it's such a nice trade going into earnings is that those that value, the options aren't gonna lose that much. Why? Because they're gonna be propped up. Why? Because there's earnings coming up and people end up paying a lot for Volatility. It. The volatility, right? It's the implied volatility. That's the one thing that makes up the price of the option or the price of the insurance if you want. Just a quick aside, if people ever look at the VIX, sometimes called the fear index, that's all it is. It's how much volatility the market expects in a one year period, okay, for the S&P 500. So by, by selling one and buying two, we have this huge run up, okay, in Google, okay, before, before earnings. And what ends up happening is the volatility is helping me. So I got price and volatility moving in my, my favor. And I was basically, you know, risking about, you know, $5,000 to make about 50. And it ran and it worked out perfectly, you know. So I ended up betting on direction and volatility and right. helping me. So. Now listen, just the fact of risking uh, five to make 50 of any kind, even right. if it's five dollars to make fifty dollars, I'm in. Right. So, so I'm a I'm a big fan. I, I trade a lot of options myself. Um, I do uh, consider you one of my gurus of options trading. Uh, what makes you a better options trader than everybody else? Because I just. Well, I don't consider myself better than everybody else, but but what gives me edge, right? Because that, that's what well, you're I consider about. you better than everybody else. So okay. what, what? Why do I consider you better than everybody else? Well, one of the things is that I'll also do a lot of is that most good options traders are contrarians. Um, like for example, when, when the, the market looks its worst. Worst. I mean, when people when the market looks its worst, and there are traders out there willing to give me their left arm for insurance, you have to be able to step up and be able to saying, I'll take that risk, why? Because the edge that you have and the premiums that you receive are huge. You just have to be able to learn how to manage your risk if it runs against right. you. So would you, would you say in life as a rule in general, you instead of buying insurance, you prefer to be the seller of insurance? It's interesting because I don't know yes. if it has to be options related yeah. or not. It, it, in an options environment, I like to end up collecting a lot more premium. And by the way, there's a reason why it's premium both in options and insurance, right? You're paying the exactly. premium, right? So I like to be collect more premium than I pay, but I like to have more insurance policies, buy more insurance policies than I sell. Meaning that I love to end up collecting more insurance, selling more stuff closer to the money, but when it comes to how many contracts I have, I like to be longer contracts. Why? It helps you manage risk this way if we run way, way down or in Google's case, when we ran way, way up, since I had more contracts, right? I owned two contracts through the one that I sold. When it ran way, way up, I made a lot of money on it. But usually I do it the opposite way. Usually I like to sell my contracts closer to the money and buy ones further away or, or either further from the money or, or back in time. Either one ends up giving you an edge over the long run. Uh, listen, uh, like, like I said, I'm into an edge. I'm into good risk reward. These are all the things we talk about every day in Shine's room. Uh, and uh, so I consider you also a, uh, a great educator. And options market, it seems like there are out of every hundred equities traders, there's one options trader. And so I think that it'd be great for the financial world to learn more about options, to be able to take advantage of once again, that fair market right. in the options market you can either buy something or sell something right. and take advantage of somebody. You can't say, hey, that's too expensive because if it's too expensive, then sell it. Right. If it's too right. cheap, then, then buy right. it. Uh, so we're, we're going to continue to uh, go through an educational series, uh, sort of give a glimpse into your world, and then hopefully be able to expose the uh, entire trading community to, to your knowledge and wisdom. So I want to thank you for coming in today. Guys, you could join us at shinesroom.com. Have a good day.